we'll come back to Sergio Science. This is Sergio Science YouTube channel. Let us start. Don't wait to become a member of Sergio Science. Please come as a member and make subscribe this channel. Don't wait. Let's continue to answer the basic questions about geoscience. Okay. Question number six said that why are the inner planet that is terrestrial and the outer planets we, we call as gases? What is the reason? What is the cause that inner planet is called inner planet is called terrestrial planet, whereas outer planet is called gases? What is the reason? We have answered these questions. Uh, the reason is that the inner planet, namely Mercury. Venus, Earth, and Mars. Okay, the inner planet means near to the, the sun. We have seen in this image, this is the sun, and near to the sun, that is the Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Thus, the four planets are called inner planet, whereas Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, thus the five planets are called outer planets. So, the inner planet, namely that is this, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are referred to as what? Terrestrial. Because, the reason, because they have a solid and rocky composition, similar to what? The Earth's crust. The reason is that the, the inner planet we call as Mercury, Venus, and Earth, and Mars are terrestrial is, is due to their composition. The compositions are similar to the Earth's crust, that is, solid uh, solid rocky composition okay this is the reason is the composition of the inner planet is similar to the outer crust. the outer crust this is the, the answer for uh, the reason that our inner planet is terrestrial okay these planets are characterized by relatively thin atmosphere and are composed mostly of metals and silicate rocks like what outer crust like what crust okay their composition is most of the time the inner planet is metal and silicon on the other hand the outer planet also known as the gaseous gems including the outer planet means including the jupiter saturn uranus and neptune this is saturn uranus neptune and pluto this outer planet is far away from at the sun this is okay the sun is here and this outer planet is far from at the sun okay these planets are called gaseous okay this planet the saturn uranus and that is outer planet is called what gaseous because they have predominantly gaseous composition consisting mainly of hydrogen and helium the reason is that the outer planet is called gaseous planet because of their composition is most of the time the composition of the outer planet is hydrogen and helium so the reason is that it becomes gaseous is this is this reason okay the outer planets have thick atmosphere and lack a solid surface makes them distinct from the terrestrial planet okay it's like what solid it is it can't it is what gaseous not solid okay that is the reason that different from terrestrial planet is got it is atmospheric thick atmosphere and it is a well, gaseous nature okay uh, terrestrial when we, we come to the terrestrial it is solid and similar to the composition of what the earth okay uh, question number seven how do lithophile chalcophile and sidrophile elements differ okay we have see we have now this uh, this term in geochemistry okay lithophile chalcophile and sidrophile elements are classified based on the affinity of element toward different geological material we have seen in this image we have seen this uh, the three uh, element ge geochemical element uh, categories one by one what are, what what is lithophile elements these elements have a strong affinity for rocks and minerals okay lithophile means rocks and minerals they are 
commonly find found in the Earth's crust. Most of the time, the lithophile element we have seen here, the lithophile element that is silicate in liquid, okay, their, their properties is silicate elements, okay, they are commonly Earth's crust and are less likely to be concerned in the core or mantle. This element is less, it is most abundant in Earth's crust, not in core and mantle. Silicate means silicate elements property. Like that of alkali, alkali nerves, halogen, these elements are totally known as lithophile elements, or it is composition, it is occur in Earth's crust. That means lithophile, which is means silicate elements. Okay. Uh, examples of lithophile elements include silicon, aluminium, potassium, and sodium. Those elements occur in the, uh, in the mineral colors what? Lithophile elements. Lithophile what? Elements. It is lightened. The second one, is which, was, which we call as charcoal elements. Charcoal elements have an affinity for sulfur and are found combined with sulfur bring minerals. Okay? Chalcophyl means sulfur with other element components. We have seen this chalcophyl, sulfur liquid. Okay, here, here, copper, zinc, the element. For, for chalcophyl, they tend to be concerned in sulfide ore. Okay, this chalcophyl element concerned or not? Sulfide ore. And are commonly associated with what? Hydro, hydrothermal process. So, Chalcophile element is characterized by sulfide ores. Okay. For some elements or some examples of chalcophile element include the copper, lead, zinc, and silver. We have seen in this image what copper, zinc, uh, silver, it is just elements are combined together to form minerals they call as chalcophile which means sulfide liquid okay the third and the last important element you call as sidrophile sidrophile elements have a strong affinity for irons irons iron and tend to be concent concentrated in the earth's course this element concentrated in what as this what Core. This one is the last one, metallic liquid, you call it. It is a citrophile, okay, which is concerned in or it is concentrated in the earth's core. The other is in the outer core, in the outer, in the crest and the mantle. Whereas we, can, we come to this citrophile element, this is concentrated in the core, okay. Citrophile elements, they are found in metallic core, okay and are associated with a process related to the formation of iron rich materials okay that elements are uh, related to iron related or metallic related materials okay examples of hydrophile elements include iron nickel cobalt and platinum those elements or the metal element we call as hydrophile elements we have seen in this image uh, this is atmosphere gaseous, atmophile gaseous, whereas lithophile silicate liquid, whereas chalcophile sulfide liquid, and metallic in sidrophile element. Please read this image carefully. This is geochemical affinity, the Goldschmidt's uh, principle. Okay. Uh, and the last and the next question we have seen that is question number eight. According to theory, when and how did the core and mantle separate? How the core and mantles or layers of the earth, that is, core and mantles are separate according to the theory? We have seen one by one. Okay. According to the current theory known as the giant impact hypothesis, the separation of the core and mantle likely occurred during the early stages of Earth's formation, approximately 4.5 billion, billion years ago. Okay? The separation of the core and mantle occurred during the early stages of what? Earth's formation. This theory suggests that a Mars-sized a Mars object 
they refer to as Tia, collide with the Yankers. The impact due to the injection of debris or fragments into space, which ultimately format the moon. This is a theory, by the way. So the core and the mantle simply separate the, at the early stages of Earth's formation. This is one of the basic information around what 4.5 billion years ago. Okay, during this violent collision, the Earth re released caused the Earth to partially melt, allowing the denser materials to sink toward the center, okay, forming the core. The denser, during this time, the denser materials move things toward the center and forming the core. Denser core in the dense, the denser material sinks to the core or to the center, whereas the lighter is up in the surface. The less dense materials, including silicate, remain close to the surface, forming what? The mantle. So the reason during the formation of the Earth uh, in the early stage, the denser is moved toward the center and the lighter or like silicate composition is to closer to the surface. At this time, the mantle is formed. Question number, question number nine. The crust probably did not separate at the same time as the core or mantle. Okay? Core and mantle also doesn't separate at the same time. They are separate, lighter, denser move downward, then the lighter is apart. Where are, when you come to the, uh, core, the crust, the crust probably does not separate at the same time as that core and mantle. Core and mantle separate at the same time. The, core, the denser is moved toward the, the bottom and the lighter is to, near to the surface. But do you have any idea how those two subdivisions? Ocean and continental crust may have evolved. The, the crusts have two parts continental crust and oceanic crust. Those two crust subdivision, how they are separated or subdivided? Is that like core and mantle at the same time during the, the same process? At the same time, they are separate? We have seen this one by one. The evolution, the evaluation and separation of the ocean and continental crust, continental crust is a complex, a complex process that occurred over billions of years through various geological phenomena. Here is a simplified explanation of how this crustal subdivision may have evolved. We have seen how oceanic and continental crusts are separate. The first one. Differentiation of the Earth's layer. During the early stages of the Earth's formation, it underwent process called differ differentiation, where denser material like iron sank towards the center to form the core, while the lighter material rose to the, rose to rise to the surface to form the crust. Okay. Okay. We have seen the first one. During what differentiation, the one reason that the, the oceanic and continental crust form due to what differentiation of layer. The second one is formation of oceanic crust. The formation of oceanic crust primarily occur at the mid-oceanic ridge through process called seafloor spreading. Okay, the process for the formation of oceanic crust is called seafloor spreading. Molten rock known as magma rise from the mantle to fill the gap created by the separation of the magma. Okay? Molten material that magma fill the space or the gap between what? The separation so what? This mid seafloor spreading. Okay. This one process. Formation of oceanic crust also as the magma cools and solidify it forms a new crust. Okay, this process continues pushing the older crust away from the ridge and creating new seafloor in the process. Okay. The third cause for the subdivisions of oceanic and continental crust is formation of continental crust. The continental crust primarily 
formed through a process called partial milk and differentiation, differentiation of the existing Gaussian crest. When tectonic plate converge, the denser, okay, when the tectonic plate converge, the, the denser ocean crest subduct the beneath the earth and the less dense continents what crust. The less dense continental crust is okay. During tectonic conversion, the denser that the ocean crust is subduct and the uh, continental crust is obduct. During this time, the formation or uh, uh, continental crust is uh, formed. Okay, as the ocean crust descends into the mantle, it undergoes partial melting. This melt, this molten material then rises toward the surface due to their light density. They do not entirely melt and instead form new continental crust. Okay? Continental crust is formed due to what? Tectonic conversion. Okay, the fourth cause for the subdivision or separation of ocean, oceanic and continental crust is plate tectonic. The movements of tectonic plate play a vital role in the evolution of the crust. Over millions of years, the continent Interactions of the split leads to the, form the formation, destruction, and reformation of both oceanic and continental crust. Okay, this process involves collision, subduction, and lateral movements of the split. Okay, question number 10, and the last one for this tutorial. What types of meteorite do we think most closely approximate the composition of Earth? early primitive mantles of the earth. Why do we think so? The type of meteorite that is, we have answered this question. The type of meteorite that is believed to most closely approximate the composition of the earth's primitive mantle of the earth is the instatite chondrite. This this is because instatite chondrites have a similar chemical and isotopic composition to the Earth's mantle. Okay, they are rich in iron, magnesium, and silicon, which are also major components of the Earth's mantle. The isotopic ratio of certain elements found in instatite chondrites closely match those found in rock from the Earth's mantle. Further supporting this hypothesis, okay? Thank you more for this tutorial. Please uh, stop here uh, because uh, if we continue, time is up, okay? Uh, if you have any comment, suggestion, 